hello guys and welcome to this new video in the game engine series hope you guys are doing good in today's video we're going to be talking about the transform component it's quite important for me to talk about all the components i've created in this game engine so that you guys know um, how this actually operate with opengl now i'm pretty sure you all know what a transform component is so the idea here is not to define what the transform component is but rather to kind of show how um, I implemented this in the code so that OpenGL could use that to actually render things on the screen. So as you can see here, the transform component is basically based on three components, as you know, the position, the rotation, and the scale. The position is basically where your object is on the screen. The rotation defines how the object is going to be inclined, the angle, the rotation, and whatever. And the scale defines how huge the object is going to be. So that's basically defined. Now, this is all theoretical and uh, yeah, that doesn't actually tell us that much about how OpenGL use transform to actually draw things on the screen. So let's get into the code. So as you can see here, we have our transform component. So it's it's just a small, you know, small uh, bunch of code. It's not huge. That's something I like about it. So. Um, if you've been following along you know we've created our entity component system and uh, yeah i'm actually using that here to do all things that you could imagine and now um our transform is basically going to inherit from the base component the base component is just an abstract class in which we uh, we just have like the parent entity id which is actually the value of the entity which uh, to which this ent this component belongs to so because we want to know who owns this component right now. That's why this guy will store that kind of information. So if you haven't watched the video about the entity component system, make sure you check on the link in the playlist in the description below. There you will find everything you need to know about that. And here basically you see I defined three vectors using GLM. You can see I created my position, my rotation and the scale and I all initialize them with values. I want to initialize my scale with one because if I put zero there, then we're not gonna see anything on my object when uh, OpenGL starts. And you can see I have some different uh, constructor here. I also have a default constructor, which is also important because when you adding component at runtime, you wanna use the default constructor to actually add them. That's why I always have a default constructor for all component that I create. And you can see I can create different uh, constructor with different uh, value that I wanna pass through so i think that's pretty much clear now how am i then sending this data to opengl so that he can use that normally a component in a pure ecs shouldn't have any you know uh, function or anything it should be just pure data so nothing else but just data but i kind of want to break that rule a little bit because this kind of make my job easy in a sense that i can basically get the model mat matrix now I hope you guys know what a model matrix is. If you have, if you don't, then you probably want to know some basics about OpenGL before you watch this video. A model matrix is basically what you know has information about the position, the rotation, and the scale of an object. Because OpenGL uses mat matrices to actually operate. That's why we want to create a matrix like that. That's why you can see we we kind of define the matrix here, creating a translate. We define the matrix of one. We translate it with a position, then we rotate it with a rotation angle for each axis, as you can see here, and then we also scale it. And as I said, GLM actually does that job for us. We don't have to implement anything to do that. We simply call the you know each function to do the task, and everything's gonna be done. And I can basically go out and return my my matrix, which can then be used anywhere I want to create something. Now let me show in one renderer how I use this. To actually build to actually render things on the screen so if i go on my i want to find my systems so let's say the mesh here um yeah you can see i basically get the component via the manager i get the transform component and then you can see i can send this data to the shader i'm going to be talking about this shader class later where i'm going to explain all these things and just like this i can pass the name of the attribute i mean of the uniform and then I can simply pass the value of that shader. And that's basically how I can use transform in this game engine. 
I know this is uh, kind of straightforward for some uh, for some people, but I wanted to talk about this because I think the idea is to inspire you to create your own engine, and the idea is to kind of let you know what I've done. And uh, since I don't often know what you guys um, really want to know, um, that's why I'm trying to speak about almost everything I do here, even if it feels straightforward. One thing I want to say though is please write me in the comment section below if you have any question, any suggestion. Maybe the way I'm actually doing this is not the best. And you know, I'm I'm not an expert in OpenGL. I started learning OpenGL a couple of months ago. I, I, I don't know that much about so don't think I'm an expert. I do like writing code, that's why I'm doing this. So if you guys have good ideas on the, or maybe you think this is optimal let me know maybe you find this kind of good for your game engine too so just write me in the comment section below so thank you guys for watching i hope you guys have learned something from this video and uh, if you've done make sure you like this video and subscribe to medical channel and i'm still working on the game engine i'm actually w working on implementing the script i can show you just a small example here uh, it's not working yet the way i want but no, i didn't want this so i just want to add a script to someone here so let me go here and add a script now the script yet I haven't uh, implemented the API to actually you know uh, send the data from C++ to C sharp I'm actually using uh, mono I'm gonna be talking more about that later I'm actually using mono to to uh, to write my scripts so right now I'm just kind of giving like just a text so if I hit play here the script will start working so you can see here so if I want to kind of show you a shot of a view of that so you guys can know how it looks like I can go here on the script hello.cs so let me open this file and you can see we have the DLL we have the X's I'm actually using this DLL to kind of call the function that are inside the script and let me kind of scroll this down you can see here I'm basically just giving this because I created a transform and I'm just incrementing the position of that transform that's why if I run this, you will see this will be given start called. So let me check this. But I still need to add uh, the script component. Script is just a default script right now, so I'm not doing anything. And uh, if I hit play, then you see we have the start called, and then we have the things. So this is like a, Java, a C sharp code. So you can see script is actually on the way and um, yeah it's quite difficult because there is a lot to figure out here build a whole api where i'm gonna redefine all the component define how they're gonna be passing through from c++ to c sharp and yeah that's basically what i'm working on right now and thank you guys for watching again see you in the next video ciao